Hey, what's going on my ASVAB party people? Anderson here, your ASVAB coach. In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and go through two challenge problems that we had in a previous group tutoring session that we did. So before I begin, make sure to smash that like button, give a comment after you're done. That way, you can keep supporting this channel and we can keep putting out great content for students like you who are trying to get the score they want and the military job they deserve. Let's jump right into it. So, this first question here. On a town map, one inch represents a distance of half a mile. If Henry and Roger's houses are 1.5 feet apart on the map, how far apart do they live? All right, so go ahead if you want to take a second to pause the video and give the problem a shot before I go over the solution. Sure, go ahead, do your thing. So I'm going to go ahead and begin right now. So here we go. First things first, whenever it comes to a word problem, remember, we want to start with the question. We want to give ourselves the opportunity to know, hey, what the heck is going on, right? Like, what are we trying to do here? Yeah, because the reason is if we start with all of the information, you know, if we read one inch, half a mile, 1.5 feet, you know, your mind is automatically going to start asking, okay, what the heck is going on? You know, why do I need this? Is this important? Should I write this down? Right? All of that anxiety, we want to kick it to the curb here because what we're going to do is just focus on the objective and then see what's available to us to help us with that objective. So watch this right here. How far apart do they live? That is the question. How far apart do they? And by they, we mean Henry and Roger. Okay? So, all right, there we go. So, we're looking for how far apart do they live. So, we can say Henry and Roger right here. Henry and Roger live blank. And you see the answers here are all in miles. So, I'm going to go ahead and say that, you know, blank miles. B live blank miles apart all right cool and that's in reality you know we're asking about the reality of the situation here before we continue just want to take a quick moment to thank you for watching this video and all i ask is that you please like comment and subscribe to the channel that way more people just like you can see these videos but on top of that if you're looking for more ways to practice the right way and raise your score with guidance without stressing then i really wholly 100 percent recommend my asvab all access program the program, long story short, helps you watch, practice, and master every topic from the word knowledge to paragraph comprehension, arithmetic reasoning, math knowledge, general science. It's there and it's designed to help you succeed with practicing the right way. So with that said, check out the link in the description to see how it all works because you're going to have ways to learn in every way that you prefer. And you get my guidance and my support all the way until you pass. So don't hesitate. Stop feeling nervous and being anxious and letting yourself feel that way when there's a solution waiting right here for you. Check out the link in the description. That way you see how it works. And then reach out to me if you have any questions about it. Let's get back to raising our scores. Now, notice that right before here, we have some information that's attached. We have, hey, Henry and Roger's houses are 1.5 feet apart on the map. All right. So Henry and Roger live, you know, M miles apart. But over here, what I'm going to say is, 1.5 feet apart on the map. Okay, so right here, m miles apart, and 1.5 feet on the map. Now, why is that important? Now, remember, when it comes to proportions, the main idea, and write this down if you've never written this down, is that you have to compare the same things in the same way. So I'm going to show you exactly what that means in a moment here. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the given information here. So this information that we have we see that one inch represents half a mile. So on the map, we see that one inch on the map translates to one, or excuse me, 0 0.5 miles in reality. So what does that mean? Well, we need to make sure that we compare the same things in the same way. Notice how we have 1.5 feet on the map. So where does that belong? Right here on the map. You see how we have on map right there on map? Yeah, we have to compare the same things in the same way. So 1.5 feet on map apparently represents the M miles that Henry and Roger live apart. So think about that. Remember, compare the same things in the same way. Compare the same things in the same way. And I'll actually just duplicate that that way we have it there. Now here's the cool thing, everybody. Here's the cool thing. Map, reality, map, reality. That's the same comparison. We're comparing the same things in the same way. 
But be very careful here. Be very, very careful. Because not only do you have to make sure that the same things are being compared in the same way, you got to make sure that the units line up as well. Because notice how we're going from map in inches to reality, miles, map in feet to miles in reality. So again, inches and feet not going to work out. We need to convert. We need to make sure we have the same units. So before I set the proportion up, what I have to do is again, take that 1.5 feet, turn it into inches. So what's one and a half feet in inches? Well, one foot's 12 inches, half a foot is six inches. So we can confidently say that we have 12 plus six, which is 18 inches. Again, rewind this if you need to. The idea is, hey, 1.5 feet, multiply it by 12, you get 18 or one and a half. So 12 inches for whole foot, six inches for half a foot, again, 18 inches. So we can go ahead and erase this right here. And we can say 18 inches on the map. Now we're good. Now we're good because everything's lined up the right way. And so with that said, boom, we're going to say one to 0 0.5. So one over 0 0.5 equals 18 to M. So 18 over M. Notice again, we are comparing the same things in the same way. One inch, 0 0.5, 18 to M. And there you have it. And so one thing you want to know here is really how to take care of proportions without always cross multiplying and dividing. There's actually a really interesting way. And it's simply by looking at the comparison itself. Notice how one inch in, uh, in the map, half a mile in reality. So it looks like the ratio is half. You are cutting it in half. And so what's 18 cut in half? That is going to be nine. And so M equals nine here. But if you needed to cross multiply and divide, that still is going to work because one times M is M. 18 times 0 0.5 or half is nine. So either way, it both checks out, but I really want to show you again, both ways to do it. And so if you enjoyed that first solution, great. Um, if you are a little confused in terms of, oh, whoa, I don't even know proportions yet. Well, don't worry. What I want you to do is go ahead and make sure that you're watching a video on proportions to understand the basics of it. If there's a recording that I made, it's going to be on this channel um, if it's available to you. But if you'd like more of these, if you'd like more lessons to go through practice, you know, that way we can walk through every single thing. Hey, then the group tutoring pass is going to be for you. I'm going to drop a link in the description of this video to all of my resources. That way you can continue acing the ASVAB to get that score you want. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next problem. So D was the answer here. Let's take a look at this second problem now. So a grocery store sells two bags of apples for each bag of celery. The store also sells five bags of grapes for every bag of apples. If the store sells 40 bags of grapes today, how many bags of celery did it sell? So this is a problem where multiple steps are required. We need more than one step, uh, probably three steps here because we have three different comparisons. Um, so with that said, we need to make sure that we understand again, hey, not all the problems are going to be nice and clean and laid out for you. Sometimes you need to use a little bit of intuition, some reasoning to make sure you get it done. So I don't want anybody here shying away from a good challenge. These are great challenges. Now let's make sure we tackle this the right way. First step, as always, just read the question. So right here, how many bags of celery did it sell? All right. So we want the bags of celery sold. So we have blank bags of celery sold. That's what I'm looking for. I'm just going to say C for right now, just in case any other variable. Now, what information do we have that's connected to celery? That's my next question. Like, okay, I'm trying to find celery, but what the heck is connected to celery, right? So let's go ahead and take a look here. You know, grocery store sells two bags of apples for every bag of celery. Oop, right there. Two bags of apple for every bag of celery. So I'm going to take uh, orange here. Right there. So two apples translates to one celery, one bag of celery. You know, you can be as detailed or as shorthanded as you want. Remember if it's test time, you want to go shorthand. So there we are. Two apples means one celery. So if we have the number of apples, think about it, cut it in half to get celery. Cause if we had four apples, that'd be two bags of celery. If we had six apples, three bags of celery, it's a two to one ratio. All that means is you have half the amount of celery as you do apples. So whatever you have for apples, cut in half. All right, so I'm done explaining it in a lengthy way here. Now we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, since we know the relationship between celery and apples, where's apples? Do we have the number of apples? Because if we have the number of apples, ah, then we can go ahead and solve this really easy. So let's keep looking here. Sells five bags of grapes for every bag of apples. 
Okay, there's apples, but it's connected to grapes now. Okay, uh, what what do we have about grapes? Oh, we see the store sold 40 bags of grapes now. Ah, so we gotta go from grapes all the way to apples, then all the way to celery. That's what makes this problem a little more difficult. Now you can use proportions to solve this, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in the intuitive way. So watch this. The other piece of information that I got is right here. Five bags of grapes for every bag of apples. The key word there is for every. That's really what forms the relationship. That's how you know they're connected. So we have five grapes translates to one apple. So watch this. Watch how I'm going to do this. It's going to be really, 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 really smooth. Because what I notice here is that I got five times the amount of grapes as I do apples. So since I have 40 bags of grapes here, what does that mean? Look, to go from five grapes to one apple, that's going to be a division of five, right? So if I'm translating grapes to apples, that's a division of five. And so therefore, what I'm going to do here is see that I got 40 grapes. And notice again, I can divide by five here to go left to right. You can also make the relationship and say, you know, one times five will get you five. And the backwards of that is just dividing by five, okay? And just like this free YouTube video right here by Mad 40 people, I have a free practice test that comes with video solutions so you can learn from every mistake and a free math class every week, once a week for two hours. Click the link over here to sign up and get started and keep raising that score. Let's get back to the action. So we see here, compare the same things in the same way. Divide by five. So I'm gonna divide by five again. 40 divided by five is eight apples. Now, eight is not the answer though, be very careful. We have the number of apples now. We were looking for celery. And remember earlier, don't forget, we said that two apples translates to one celery. It's a two to one ratio. The number of apples is double celery. So if I'm trying to go from apples to celery, let me use orange here. If I'm trying to go from apples to celery, guess how I'm gonna do that? Oh, I just forgot that 40 is right there. But what's gonna happen here is that, hey look, it's a two to one ratio. Divide the apples by two to go down to celery. And so that's exactly what I'll do. Divide by two to get four bags of celery. And that's why C is the answer. And so again, my ASVAB party people, remember, being consistent and asking the right questions is gonna get you to where you wanna be. That score you want is not that elusive. You can practice, you, and as long as you're consistent, you will continue growing. And so if you're trying to ace the ASVAB and raise your score the right way, Go ahead, reach out to me, check out the description of this video for all the links, and make sure to smash that like and comment. That way, we can continue making great videos for you. If you're subscribed, even better to this channel. That way, again, we can make, keep making great content for you guys to keep helping you and everybody else understand that it is possible to get the score you want. So, with that said, my ASVAB party people, I'll see you in the next video, and cheers, keep raising that score. Let's go. And so we both know this video just helped you with your test anxiety by just a little bit. And to keep lowering your test anxiety and keep raising your confidence, that's what my ASVAB All Access program is for. The link's right up here. Click it, watch the video on how it works, and you'll see exactly why thousands of my students have raised their scores and gotten the jobs they want. So click there, watch the video, and sign up to raise your score. I'll see you soon.